in the desert. <laughs> All right. How is everybody doing out there? Uh, this is the uh, premiere of Land Between Two Rivers on WebDM Twitch channel. I am uh, your host and dungeon master, Jim Davis. Um, this is a first time hosting one of these for me, and I really didn't really think about it until just now. So uh, I, let's go ahead and um, and take it to the players. And uh, we'll start with uh, TK. TK, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us who you're going to be playing tonight? Uh, yeah, I'm TK, and I'm going to be playing Icky, who is the Lizard Folk Ranger. Um, she is hungry. And that pretty much sums up the rest of it. She's hungry and spooky, just like me. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Josh. Uh, Josh is playing Baloo. I use the third person there. Josh is playing Baloo, the bugbear druid. He's also a warden of the Fellowship of Andrus. Um, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a big galoot. He's like seven foot three, 300 pounds of fun, and also sleeping. He likes nice. to sleep. Uh, Anna. Hello, I'm Anna, and I'm going to be playing Ellie. She is a variant human barbarian. Ooh. Hey. And she was actually created uh, by a wizard because there are no more humans here. Yes, we'll get into that here in just a moment because Ellie is quite, uh, turns quite a few heads, uh, as we'll, uh, we'll see here in just a minute. Uh, Grant, how are you doing tonight? Now, first of all, Jim Davis. I'd like to thank the many, many fans throughout the world that have tuned in tonight on WebDM. Second, I'd like to thank you for stepping up behind the DM shield to take on the D&D bad boy. And for all these fine folks to join me on this mission. Uh, Jim, you know me. I'm very fine. <laughs> I'm very jealous. I'm playing Guild in the Guy. I've been, I've been watching a lot of Dusty Roads, the American Dream this week. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, working for the man. So um, I will be playing a goblin cleric who uh, is uh, looking forward to doctrinal debates with uh, Baloo, the bike bear true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Lindy, how are you tonight? I am doing super spiffy. So hyped for this campaign. I've been counting down the days and hours. I'm just so ready. I will be playing Mer Valentine, tiefling bard extraordinaire. Um, more well known for her uh, nighttime business, wink, wink, than her you know, working for the Wardens with Baloo, but she is a very charismatic and charming individual with maybe a little bit of a darker side that will be revealed over time. Oh yeah, excellent. And as we, uh, as we sort of travel to this faraway world, this desolate world that has been uh, ravaged by magic and warfare and conflict, um, I'd like to kind of set the scene for everyone. This is a, uh, a campaign that is near and dear to my heart and is a result of several other campaigns uh, that have led us to this point where the world is a, uh, a dying place. Um, the world was once a beautiful place. The ancients had many names for it. None survived the freezing darkness or the cataclysmic war that followed. Much was forgotten in that time. The terrible weapons of war brought civilization to its knees. The great civilizations of the elves, dwarves, and humanity fled, and left behind a devastated world to the forgotten, the outcasts, and the lost. Uh, so this is a world, uh, at the moment, no one really knows uh, the, the name of it. No one has a word for it, they just call it the world here. Um, it is largely a desert filled with uh, reality frayed wastelands and uh, where magic sort of runs them up. Uh, there are no more great civilizations as far as anyone knows. Most people live in small isolated villages with distrustful strangers. Um, in the particular uh, setting that we're starting in, the land between two rivers, an organization of druids and nature priests uh, keeps the peace as it were and makes sure that raiders and monsters from the wasteland are kept at bay and that some semblance of peace and stability can be maintained. They do that by severely restricting the use of arcane magic within their lands. And the wardens, who are members of this fellowship, patrol its borders and its villages, hunting down uh, magic users or those that would uh, use arcane magic for really any nefarious end, but also just to kick them out. Uh, those people are often uh, offered the choice of 
ceasing to practice their magic and live peacefully but under the watchful eye of the humans, or are kicked out, driven into exile from the land. At worst, they are put to death. Those that fight back certainly are uh, attacked and, uh, and assaulted by the wardens. Um, so this is, the, uh, this is the land that we find ourselves in. There's a large town here, trade town as it's called, uh, just south along the river. Uh, the environment here is mostly desert. Two rivers, the Horn and the Hound, meet. And where they meet, the Druids had planted a great tree, which is where they, uh, they call their headquarters. Uh, south of that is trade town, where all manner of orcs and hobgoblins, goblins, kobolds, lizard folk, drow and the plain touched uh, congregate, meet and uh, they're there to do business and eke out a survival in this land today is market day all manner of vagabonds and wasteland wanderers have uh, wandered in to sell their wares to purchase the goods that they need to trade news and stories and to enjoy a brief bit of camaraderie and celebration before heading back out to the parts of the wasteland where they dwell uh, to uh, go about their survival. The uh, drow delegation from up the River Horn has just set up their, uh, their first building in town. That's cause for some celebration. And there are a great many drow traders and diplomats within the city at the moment. Um, I'd like to kind of uh, get a feel from all the players. What are your, what are your characters doing uh, in the, in, you know, around uh, trade town today? What is their, uh, what do they set out to do? Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, unless somebody has something that immediately jumps at them, I will call on somebody. I think Ellie is, I mean, this is her first time ever um, leaving Anders and his home or mm -hmm. their home. Uh, so she, re she really has no idea at all what any of this is. So everything so, is very new to her. So it, give us an idea. Uh, Ellie has uh, grown up in isolation with this wizard who basically what grew her in a vat like yeah basically <laughs> imagine a scientist but a wizard just fucking around and oh like he just has this craving of uh bringing humans back and maybe uh avenging somebody mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. foreshadowing <laughs> oh. Um, oh. Oh. so yeah, so he, after many, many uh, tries and experiments, he finally made Ellie, and she's growing up to be an okay human. Um, she doesn't really know she's a barbarian yet, so <laughs> we'll she find hasn't out. Found, found that in her yet. Uh, yeah. So Ellie turns quite a bit of heads. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, most people here, the orcs, the hobgoblins, other goblinoids, uh, kobolds and such, it's been centuries since anyone's seen a human. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Ellie's entry into trade town, uh, particularly depending on what you're wearing, uh, if you're not trying to hide yourself or anything. Um, yeah. yeah, she definitely has a hood on and some like okay. um, kind of leather armor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I did put scale mail, but... okay. But it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but she definitely has a hood on and she's just kind of like, she's not trying too much to hide who she is because she doesn't know that she's different. Gotcha. Um, so, but she'll definitely be like, whoa. And like her um, hood will kind of cover her eyes a little bit. She'll like pull it back. And then she's just so amazed by this world and maybe a little bit scared of like some people of how they look because they look very intimidating. Yeah, there's yeah. You know, the, the the people in your immediate vicinity certainly take notice of you. Um, there's a gaggle of kobolds that sort of like look up and in confusion and and perhaps a bit of disgust, um, and heads turn. Um, but we're gonna fade to someone else here real quick uh, and figure out what happens to Ellie here in a minute. Um, what is Baloo up to on this well, market day? Baloo is escorting Ellie. Yeah, uh, if I. Uh... If I believe so you're going to be, you're, you, yes, correct. So okay. you at some point, Baloo at some point is called in. Uh, let's say that, um, you know, you're, you're basically your supervisor, your superior, uh, mm -hmm. one of the wardens, Devadi, uh, an orcish woman uh, who's sort of a, uh, takes her job very seriously and often comes into conflict with Baloo. 
um, approaches you at some point that we found a someone wandered in out of the wastes and I need you and Mir to escort her to the Hierophant and figure out what it is, what she is. I haven't seen anything like this. Blue, I need you to take this very seriously and no, uh, no slacking off this time. Do I have to do it now? Yes, right now. She's okay. Uh, several of the uh, the merchants in the stalls have they've. But they've, they're talking to her, and I just don't want things to get too out of hand. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll go, Steve, yeah, sure. It's okay. fine. In which case, Baloo would go and, and, and seek her out. I'm sure it'd be really easy follow the, the gazes and the gasps. Okay, so you don't find you don't go approach Mir first? You go directly to uh, where the merchants have uh, taken Ellie? Hmm. Well, Mir, where would you be? right now would you say um she'd probably be skulking about the marketplace a little bit looking for intriguing items she's it's a shopping day she's also shopping for potential customers um oh, okay. and she's probably just she's got like her horns are all jeweled up some perfume on a little fit like sheer face veil covering her oh nice okay then yeah yeah he, he'd be on the lookout for her uh because they're they're partners they're partners in crime or, yeah. or not crime. Or not anti-crime. <laughs> anti-crime. <laughs> so uh, you go and look, uh, Baloo goes and looks for Mir. And so the market itself is uh, a large open air market. It's dominated by a, uh, a central sort of tent, uh, sort of tent ring, which you can smell all different kinds of, uh, of desert, basically wasteland meats being grilled. Uh, there's flatbreads and spiced crickets and things like that that uh, that people are cooking under the central tent and then an I've outer ring of, of stalls yes exactly <laughs> crunchy crickets spicy cactus uh, oh, yeah. kebabs that oh, kind of thing prickly pears right prickly pears <laughs> um Iki and uh gildan are also present in the market and you can make me uh dc 10 perception checks to see if you notice the commotion that's going on um or rather when you start noticing the commotion That is a two. <laughs> <laughs> so you're occupied. <laughs> <laughs> How about Gildan? I got a six. A six? <laughs> so you guys, you'll have to uh, give me an idea of what it is that you're doing uh, as um, Ellie's drawing heads and two wardens are approaching her. Gildan is... Uh, strolling about the market with a saucer and on it is what would be the equivalent of an armadillo casserole uh weasel kebabs desert weasel kebabs and uh, uh fried scorpions on the on a stick and he is singing a merry jaunty tune trying to entice uh children and merchants to try the delights um and he is willing to uh, trade the food for a good story. Gotcha. Mm. So yeah, there's a bunch of like goblin children following you around, um, and, and others besides, like kobolds. And uh, if you've got treats on offer, there's probably a large crowd around you that's uh, distracting you. Excellent. How about uh, Icky? Uh, Icky is heatedly haggling with a um, merchant right now over trading some manner of trinkets that they have found on their escapades through the desert. Um, mostly uh, tooth necklaces, an assortment of ears, um, a couple of uh, tusks that they found with some polished stones inside of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not getting a great deal for it. No, the, the scrap buyers are... You know, the, the ears, they just don't know what to do with. The tusks, they could, they might be able to take, but they're being a little stingy. Um, it's a, it's an intense haggle, let's say. It's very intense. <laughs> uh, so the marketplace is uh, packed today. All manner of people from the wasteland uh, and the hinterlands where the uh, villages under the control of the fellowship are, 
are in Market Town. The population of, uh, sorry, Trade Town, it, uh, the population of it basically doubles uh, on market days. And you can see merchants riding by with caravans of giant desert lizards uh, that their cargo has come in on. Um, great big tall sand striders stalk through the streets uh, on their way towards the, uh, the perches where their riders will dismount and uh, participate in the, uh, in the festivities and the commerce. Um, Ellie, you're surrounded by about five or six orcs, hobgoblins, half orcs, and they're keeping a, uh, they're not like getting up in your face, but they're asking you a lot of questions. Where are you, where'd you come in from? Are you, do you, are you okay? Is there something wrong with you? That kind of thing. Um, well, I just came from that way. Like, I don't really want to reveal uh, where I actually came from because uh-huh. Anna was like, don't blow it up. Don't blow it. Don't blow my cover. <laughs> uh, so you're trying to like, what, stall? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it was that way or no. Maybe maybe it was this way. Um, I just came here to explore. Her you guys had great food. It's about this time that Baloo and Mir show up. You see a tall, what, seven-foot, red-haired bugbear uh, and a charcoal-skinned, white-haired demon, maybe? Uh, (laughs) Your first impression, I guess? Uh, I don't know. Uh, So Mir and Baloo have uh, arrived and see Ellie surrounded by this, uh, this group of merchants who are just kind of asking her questions. and They're not like... Like I said, they're not up in her face, but they've 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 basically surrounded her. Yeah, uh, Blue will flash his badge like a uh, like a lazy cop. And just <laughs> just like can't see it. He just holds it up, puts it back in his robe. First. Okay. His yeah, mother. Mara's gonna be like, people, people, are we selling goods or interrogating people? What are you, the wardens? No, no, no. no. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what the, she's got. Look at her. There must be something wrong with her, right? There's yeah. something wrong with that? me? Do There's I have something wrong. on my face? Is she just, you don't look right. Are you okay? Well, then are you trying to sell her medicine? Why are you harassing potential clientele of the market? No. This is not good for business. They, they kind of like, hmm. Uh, look, right. and you are all the way from your stalls. People could be robbing you behind your backs and you wouldn't even notice. Yeah, there's a large gathering of children uh, nearby that are, those of them that can't get to the the, uh, the treats on offer are getting mm-hmm. uh, little uh, sticky fingers elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, darling, please, if you would come with us, we could get you away from all this hubbub. Hubbub, sure? Yeah. yeah. That's uh. Okay. Lemur's just gonna kind of link arms with her and kind of just like like escort her away. Like, oh, this is like, come on, this is mine now. Let's go. Yeah, Ellie will probably just kind of stare at her a little t- for a little too long. Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think Blue would lead the way and use his giant bugbear arms to kind of like push people out of the way. And you're like, nothing to see here. Come on. You, you can, as you push your way through the crowd that's gathered, um, you notice that you, uh, an old uh, debating uh, partner, Gildan, mm. is the at the center of this crowd. Um, you know, trading stories for treats. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think Blue would just stop what he's doing and go, hey! My heretical friends. I was muted. Um, <laughs> I kind of dart him a glance, and then I just lock my eyes to his eyes, and I uh, slide a weasel kebab into my mouth, and then suck it in whole. Mm. And the whole thing goes straight down, no chewing, kind of like a duck. And then I, I, I think I'd actually respect you for that. Mur respects you for that as well. Good. Right. <laughs> and uh, I start making my way over to him. And I leave the treats, the armadillo casserole, uh, the scorpion sundaes, the weasel kebabs, and the Bring salsa. Em. I'm like, enough of tails. Bring them up. Oh, oh, this is, we're going to do this right here. All right. I pick the saucer up and gather around, children. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you how we take uh, Druid to school. Um, I kind of goblin my way up to him and 
look up. I'm about three feet tall and 35 pounds. He's a good seven feet. I look right at him. And just yeah. stare. Everyone, wow. there's a big crowd that's kind of gathered now. And Icky, you can even, it's its enough that uh, that even you notice that there's a big crowd that's gathered in the middle of the market. And I stare right up at him and I go, so tell me, Brother Baloo, the walker of the ways, why does the sun come up each day? Man, I don't know. All I know is that sometimes, you know, you're sleeping in and it hits you and it just feels so good. Um, I can only assume that, that it's some intelligent creature trying to, to teach us uh, a lesson about about love and also it's time to get up. Also waking up. Yeah. Mm. Would you say the sun creature is wiser than the moon creature? Definitely. Hmm. Are you saying all those here that worship the moon are lesser than those that worship the sun and some of the goblins that may be taking note of this? I don't know if they worship the moon or not, but I'm gambling. There, I mean, there are a lot of uh, folk beliefs around here. The, the fellowship is fairly... Oh, uh, no, they're going to run me out of town. <laughs> 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 You know, some of them are quite diehard. They're like, you know, the everything has a spirit kind of uh, animists. But uh, yeah, which is pretty much what Blue is. But on market day, there's an eclectic group of uh, yeah. beliefs and uh, opinions on theology. Yeah, uh, Blue would pretty much respond with, "Nah, man, the moon's great too." Uh, <laughs> that, it, I'm sort of becoming. Uh, frustrated as he doesn't fall directly into a hypothetical trap. Mm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I look him up and down and say, I remind you, Baloo, that law cannot reach where enforcement will not follow. What brings you to market today? Is he, is Ellie still near him? Yeah. Yeah, I, I see both her. Ellie and me are there. I look back up to him. I go, what happened to your tall, sick goblin? What ails her? I go up and try to size up her disease her ailment i mean she doesn't necessarily happen i just haven't right. seen something like her yeah uh, hello i look down at him he's very small ellie's yeah. about six feet i motion for you to kneel down and come down to my level i'm having a hard time hearing Mer's just kind of <laughs> face palming she's like how how did this escalate to this I... yeah i reach the, uh... Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say real quick the uh, the merchants that Icky is ha- is haggling with uh, are momentarily distracted as a group of children uh, make off with a bunch of their goods. I'm a, I'm 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 feeling up. Well, that's not the right terminology. Crazy. Um, I'm a, <laughs> uh, yeah. I place my hands on her cheeks, kind of look deep into her eyes. Have I ever seen a creature like this before? I'm trying to size her up and down. Sniffer, does she have a familiar scent? Yeah, there are. She's pretty warm. <laughs> there are. Uh, thank you. Um, there are ancient half orcs who still have some uh, human heritage in them. Mm. I think, given uh, given Gildan's knowledge of like medicine, uh, he he might recognize some of those features in Ellie. You are one of the old ones. Um, I think I'm only 18 years old, but maybe that's old for you guys. Goblins, yes, goblins are brief-lived creatures, usually oh. passing away long before their times, but guilt in the seas. What brings you to market day? Uh, mostly just exploring the area. Um, and I, like, pat you on the head, like, very awkwardly like are you and how old are you about 10 37 <laughs> that's that's a lot of years oh it's not that many not it's, really it's it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 look do i have to cut you open and count the rings to figure out how old you are the, the rings? rings 
Yes. Like with a tree. Oh. We don't have many of those. Well, if that's... I'm pretty sure I'm 18 years old. I don't think you necessarily need to do that. But if you want to... Where did you come from? Um, I don't remember. Baloo, your goblin is broken. You must have it fixed. I don't think she's a goblin, man. Here, I offer her, yeah, I offer her some of the armadillo casserole and Baloo. I, I hand him some weasel kebabs because even though we kind of come off as a little abrasive, this is just how we say hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, gotcha. earlier when I, when I was eating just a minute ago, that was in, that was in character. Mm, but every time I, I do something disgusting and eat something on camera, it's in it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it sticks in the beard. <laughs> yeah, you're really blurring the lines later. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, as this exchange has gone on, and it's the little little uh, pickpockets along the the periphery of the crowd have have started to do their work. Um, you, everyone, uh, both Mir and Baloo, at least because they recognize her, can see Dadvi uh, walking across the uh, the empty spaces between the stalls with sort of a scowl on her face, um, and then everyone else just sees a, an angry-looking orcish uh, warden approaching the uh, the crowd. All right, let's break it up. Come on now, Baloo. Mm -hmm. I can see you in there. Come on. Here, use those big arms of yours to break up this crowd and get... Uh... Yeah. Mer still has her, her, like, her arm around um, Ellie's waist because mm. she's you know not that tall, so it's like more like a casual. Casual. Um, she, uh, Dadby nods at, at, uh, at Mer and uh, gives her kind of a look of not this again <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and helps uh, Baloo break up the crowd. Yeah. Um, you know, we were bringing her. Uh, we got I got distracted by my friend, and then, you know, somebody gave me some food. What's the rush? Well, Baloo, the rush is that we don't know who. And at this point, she turns to Ellie, who you are. Um, we have someone that we'd like for you to talk to. Um, you're not in any trouble. We just. Well, you've drawn already a, quite of uh, quite a bit of disturbance. So, if uh, you I'm would really please. sorry. I didn't I didn't mean to do that. Um, people were just staring, and I think maybe I had something on my face. Uh, I don't think so. Um, come with me, and um, Dadvi then leads y'all across the market to uh, to where the the fellowship sort of maintains uh, an enclave within trade town. It's uh, an open air garden uh, near the river. And um, it's sort of uh, compared to the hubbub and, and jostling and, and crowds of the market. It's much more serene and quiet place um, that they have there. Um, for anyone who there's sort of a small crowd that follows you onlookers, mostly children and the, the, uh, those people in the market who aren't there to do business. Um, it, but you have drawn uh, a crowd of about 20 or so people that are standing at the edge of the gardens, uh, respectful distance away, but, um, but definitely trying to get a good look. And it's uh, Baloo, Mir, and uh, Ellie are uh, walking through the gardens then. Right. So... What is your name? Uh, my name is Ellie. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. I am Mer Valentine, and this is my compatriot, Baloo. Hi. Hello. Hi. As you, uh, as you walk through, you see that uh, Dadvi has gone up ahead and is uh, talking to the Hierophant that's here, the head priest here. Um, he is an orc named uh, Orduk, a compassionate man you know uh, you know to be but uh, also one of the uh, old school uh, fellowship uh, people one of the ones who's very hard line on say magic use and uh, and making sure that everything is nice and stable within yeah. the land yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's seated just on a uh, on a bench and uh, motions over to the three of you to uh, to come here 
Do so. Okay. Do so with style. <laughs> I do so with zero style. Zero style. <laughs> he is a, uh, like I said, an, an old, uh, one of the older orcs um, that's here. Sitting down, he's got uh, uh, sort of a, an old staff, uh, one of the first ones cut from the trees that uh, grew around here. He looks Ellie up and down and uh, spends a long time just studying your face and uh, before he finally speaks. Can you tell me, do you know how you came to be here? Um, well, I, I woke up in a forest, I think, and then I saw the town and I just decided to walk here. I see. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you don't remember anything before that? Mm, nope. I see. Um, well, let me explain something to you. Perhaps, uh, it will help you understand the reaction that you caused in the market. Uh, you are a, a human, correct? Is that what you understand yourself to be? I think I've heard that word before, but uh -huh. ye yes, I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to go with that. You, no one here has seen um, any one of your kind ever. It's barely remembered and those people who are, are learned and study those things. Uh, well, very what much happened? To, to, I, it's just like I'm the first one to come here, or... There used to be humans, but um, the last we... Uh, as, as we understand it, you were all uh, driven to extinction or fled um, in a great calamitous war uh, long ago. Um, I, like I said, it's been quite some time since anyone has heard anything about a, a human. And so you can understand it's uh, going to cause a reaction. Well, I didn't want to mess up with whatever plans you had. I just... It was the only logical reason, you know, to come here and maybe grab some food because I'm really hungry, even though that armadillo soup or thing looked kind of delicious, but probably not my style. But I mean, beggars can't be choosers. At least that's what somebody told me once. Who told you that? I don't know. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, I think the only thing I remember is the forest and my name. And that's it. Go ahead and uh, have Ellie make me a deception check. Sure. Can, can Mar make an insight check? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, any, uh, so can Baloo. Yeah. I got a six. <laughs> okay. Nope. Blue uh, is paying attention to food since she mentioned food. So, uh, Ur got an 18. All right. So, yeah, there's something off about Ellie's story. And um, for a brief moment, uh, Orduk catches Mur's eye. And, uh, you know, they exchange a knowing glance for a second. Um, well, all are welcome in Trade Town. We have uh, only a few rules. You don't practice magic, do you, of the arcane or occult kind? Mm, I don't think so, unless you guys, and then she pulls out her great axe, unless you guys call this magic, which... No, you know. you'll find that there are a great many uses for a tool such as that um, around Trade Town, but uh, the use and uh, practice of occult or arcane magic is forbidden here. Um, natural magics or magics that are connected to the land are permitted, should you know them. Um, the only other thing we ask is that you do not shed blood when you are within our lands. Any disputes you might have, you should settle uh, either in the wastelands or uh, through non-violent means. Otherwise, you are welcome here. I should ask, though, that Mir and Baloo escort you for a time to make sure that uh, you're not okay. uh, bothered. Uh, sure, I mean, maybe do you, do you guys really want to grab some food, though, because I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> and we can get food. Maybe course. we could become friends. I don't know. I think 
that's a thing. If you like food, yeah. Yes, I love food. Okay, all right. I see yeah. this going very well. As uh, as you guys begin to talk of food and perhaps what your next moves are, um, Orkton uh, approaches Mir, gets up from the bench that he was sitting on, and uh, I uh, would you walk with me for a moment? I have of uh, another matter to discuss. Yes. And she will and... kind of flow over with him. Her very thin, uh, kind of veily garments are <laughs> blowing in whatever breeze is going on. There's a nice breeze coming in off the water. It's pleasant here in the garden. Uh, the druids tend it well. Um, and you walk amongst the, uh, the trees and bushes uh, of the garden. I'm not sure if you were aware of this, but several days ago, uh, north of the city, along the Horn River, a portal opened. Um, there were panicked reports from some of the northern villages that... Uh, concerned about the proximity of a portal so close to uh, our home. I'm curious if you've heard anything about it uh, in your in your wanderings or if you know anything. We sent some people out to investigate it, but they have not returned yet. I may have heard a thing or two about a, a portal opening to the north, northeast as well. Mm. Yes. yes. Its proximity is unusually close, I might say, comparative to normal portals that open in the wastelands. I'm curious if uh, our new guest might be connected to it in some way. I <laughs> do not believe so. I believe the portal is of a different nature. Ah, well, I was hoping to be able to trust your instincts on this. Uh, it might be that uh, if we do not hear back from the people we sent to investigate that uh, we might have to go looking for them. So keep an ear to the ground, would you? Oh, but of course. I always do. Mm. And he uh, and he chit-chats uh, as he walks back to the group. Uh, how about everybody else? What have, what have Icky and Gildan uh, been doing during all this? I will let Icky speak for our shenanigans. Um, well, while there was a huge crowd and everything, if he did consider trying to catch one of the children, one of them that looked particularly urchinish, uh, uh -huh. just too darn fast, but next time, <laughs> oh. next time. Um, and I assume Gildan has returned to give some sort of report as to what's going on. Yes, I I want to make Icky aware that I have seen a tall, uh, oddly skinned goblin that's as tall as an ogre, perhaps taller. I'm not very good with heights. And uh, strange, confused, uh, seems to be connected to the old ones, uh, perhaps of a royal line. I'm not sure. This is a mysterious... Uh, entity indeed, and it is best that Icky becomes aware of this. And if it's nothing, it's dinner. Yes. Icky. Icky likes dinner. I like that. How much meat? <sighs> mm, about seven gildens. And bones? Uh, enough to make an, uh, uh, a gold in a suit of armor. <laughs> Icky We're... doesn't need armor. But Icky gold needs might. dice. Ooh. Many... You are not my broodling. I don't I... care what you do. Yeah, I sort of reach into my pouch, and uh, I, I do pull out some bone dice, and I, I sniff them, and I go, Many dice could be harvested, but I feel her living state is perhaps more powerful than her dead bones. Those are powerful words. Uh, where are you guys having this conversation? Uh, I, I think in the center of town square in loud voices. No, so like um, <laughs> over some spiced crickets? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm hand, handing her essentially, in order to get her to talk, I have to prod her. So yeah. I, I hand her, you know, here's a weasel kebab, 
Here's yeah. the armadillo casserole. I reach in my pockets, pull out two desert toads. She takes one, then the yeah. other. Icky is being very impatient and just like outpacing him, like trying to walk around corners. Like, I can't believe that you find me every city. Oh yeah. How? <laughs> my third eye, it watches. I have seen no such third eye. It is the invisible eye. How much meat? No meat. It's about this time you guys see Baloo and Ellie walk back into the uh, marketplace. There she is. Um, I kind of uh, look up and kind of, you know, can I get a ride? Can I climb on your back this time? Oh. <laughs> Please. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> and I just kind of nimbly try to follow her. You know, almost like a Charlie Chaplin walk as uh, speedily yeah. as possible. If he's gonna ask. like awkwardly like kinda and then you were right this time. That is a lot of meat. And uh and try to like not hardcore stealthy follow, but definitely take like a mental note. Mm-hmm. of Baloo's size and the like the the pace of their gait and whether or not they have a purpose to where they're walking. All right. Um, Baloo, do you ever walk anywhere with purpose? Uh, unless it's like towards food or bed, no. All right. Uh, I, you know, he's he's got long arms, right? Like seriously long arms. And so he'll, if he passes somewhere and no one's really looking, he might just take a bite. He's just gonna sn- sn- snatch some food. Yeah, there, there's like a there's like a jug of something hanging from a stall. He just uh-huh. like, takes a sip, puts it back. No one said no one says much because they're you're a warden and, and yeah. you know they just kind of put up with it. But yeah. behind your back, they're kind of. Uh... Yeah. I mean, he's he, he's not a thief. He's just uh, he just knows other people are going to be generous with him because of how big he is. <laughs> right. So as you uh, and uh, it's not long after that uh, that uh, Mur can uh, rejoin the market. So the crowds have uh, dispersed and people have gone about their regular sort of business of commerce and, uh, and greeting one another. Looking around, you can see that all manner of goods and services are available today. The great number of merchants have laid out their carpets and uh, put their tents and uh, sort of shelters up against the desert heat um they are offering everything from oils and balms and lotions of various uh fragrances to remove the the grime and grit of the wastelands um there is a a scale cleaning station and a paraffin uh dip afterwards for all of the different uh dragon kin kobolds and lizard folk that are found here in the uh, markets a stockyard sells various mounts and other beasts of burden. Um, and you see, uh, you know, tattoo stalls, various food uh, items being sold, drinks and, uh, and other beverages are available, uh, as well as baubles and everything else you might find at a, uh, a desert wasteland market. Um, uh, Baloo's going to ask Ellie, uh, so, anything you want to see? Um, so far, I'm seeing a lot, which is really, really awesome. Um, but I don't know what is what is your favorite thing to eat? Oh no, uh, depends on what I'm doing while I'm eating. Um, okay, if what I'm if it's laying down to somebody that you just met and with some friends? Okay, all right. Uh, you know, something that's going to not get in your teeth. Um, I'd say avoid, uh, you know, avoid uh, anything with an exoskeleton. I, you know what? I like a good melon if you can find it. Hard to come by. Uh, uh, caterpillars. Caterpillars are a good one. Um, okay. And those are delicious? Y- yeah. Yeah, everything's delicious if you, if you eat it right. Uh, so, yeah. Um... Yeah. Oh, here. Over here. Yeah. Let me show you. Okay. Uh, she blue will, blue will uh, go to a, a, a fried bug stand. Okay. Uh, um, 
how about everybody else? Are are I were Icky and uh, and Gildan following the pair of them? Oh yes. Icky is yeah. absolutely following. Okay. On and the then, hunt. On the hunt. And then how about uh, Mir? Well, Mir is probably watching them and tailing behind a bit to see if anyone looks like they're going to mess with them. And if so, then she goes over to that person and distracts them, gives them a little spiel and stuff, and then while keeping an eye on them, and then goes off to the next person, hands them a business card, goes off. She's just basically making sure, in her own way, that they don't get messed with gotcha. while they go get food. Okay. Um, and yeah, like, people are watching, they're curious, they uh, they stare, um, and there are some people who, who like, get really close, um, and a couple of them, like, are trying to, like, just poke at Ellie, like, just to, like, get a shoulder or your one, arm. One finger. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, or, 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 like, two, like, two little kids, two little, like, orc kids are daring each other to go over there and uh, and to touch you to see if you're real or if you're not like some kind of weird ghost thing you can hear do, them. do they come up to me or you can hear them arguing they're fairly close and not trying to be quiet oh, okay then she'll just kind of ignore them <laughs> kind of keep walking <laughs> as Mara walks past them she smacks them both on the hand with her tail as just mm-hmm. casually she walks by like pop pop <laughs> so have I'll have uh, Icky, Mer, and Gildan make me perception checks real quick. Let me know if you get above a fourteen. Um, I don't think I got above a four, so Ooh. no need for me. <laughs> I got a thirteen. Thirteen. Not one, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even in town. Right, <laughs> you're just well. You're like so focused on this. Uh, on this new arrival um yeah there's just a lot to distract you and the sights and smells and sounds of the market uh are you know make kind of uh sussing anything out a little difficult um you guys pretty much are allowed to to eat and go about your business without too much trouble no one's gonna mess with the warden and with uh mur on the case uh keeping people off you know no one really comes up and uh and bothers the pair of you If, so if it looks bugs? what's that i was like so what about those bugs the are, are those good and like i point at like a random one with a lot of legs oh yeah yeah um and i found out that the bigger they get the better they are um i like uh i like turning into a snake and then swallowing one that's like double my length just to see if i can do it uh that's really fun that sounds I, I, mm-hmm. dangerous. I know, I know not everybody can do that, but it's really good to just fill yourself up that much. Yeah. I, I don't think I would try it. Maybe I'll try, like, a little bit. I mean, I could teach you how to be a snake. It would take a while, but I could do it. Yeah, that, that sounds cool. Mm-hmm. And then Ellie's just, like, agreeing to this because she really wants to become friends with him. <laughs> Just he seems nice. He likes food. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they're selling like spicy, like curried crickets, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so this kind of goes on for a while. The 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 market uh, is a, it's a successful market day. Um, there are at some point uh, a, a group of orcs uh, sets up shop in one of the corners of the market and sort of starts a imp- what seems to be an impromptu wrestling match. Um, which draws a bit of a uh, a bit of a crowd there, but for the most part, the um, the market day is rarely tame um, until Baloo sees Dadvi again after about an hour or so of, of you know hanging out in the market. Hmm. Um, Baloo will will tell Ellie, you know, uh, hold on a second, just. Uh... Just uh, chill with Mary for a minute. Okay. And I wave uh, at her, like, awkwardly. Uh, Mary uh, beckons her over. Do you like clothes shopping? I'm looking at this lovely silk. Oh, that looks nice. Oh, it's very soft. Mm, indeed. Mm, and I'll go talk to, to Dudley. 
She um, she motions you over. All right, Baloo. I got another thing I need you to do. Yeah. Okay. Enoch has uh, Enoch has brought in some new baubles from the wastelands, and we need you to go over there and just give them a look, will you? I just need you to go over there and look at them, Baloo. Nothing complicated. Uh, and you would know Enoch to be a uh, a peddler of um, just trinkets, knickknacks, uh, things that he claims are harmless uh, baubles, but that skirt the line uh, but with uh, arcane objects. Hmm. Um, he sells books that perhaps the, the Fellowship would rather him not sell, and scrolls that are just a little too close to being actual uh, spells. Um, but he never crosses that line. He sells curiosities, as he describes them. I, I might have blackmailed him before so that he gave me some cool books, and I didn't rat him out. That's okay. probably happened at least once. Okay. Because Baloo likes to read, when you know, before and after naps. Sure. Um, so... Yeah. So yeah. So D- Dodvi is asking, you need to g- just go over there, Blue. I really, I don't need anything more than to just check it out. And okay. you can tell that she's it's it's written all over her face that she's impatient uh, right now. Right. Right. I'll. Uh, okay. All right. I clear signals. Let's go do this. So um, he, Blue would he would he would head immediately over to uh, Enoch. Okay, um, what's everybody else up to during this like hour that they were eating and uh, and and hanging out? I am immediately distracted by the orc wrestling. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Icky has kind of like set herself out into the side, kind of just watching to see if they've moved at all, mm-hmm. and is kind of like uh, in her mind setting their course how they've been walking around and trying to see if there are similar places watering holes so to speak that the animals will return to nice. on a regular basis <laughs> and she's actually gonna go ahead and open up her little side pouch that she has stitched into her um sort of it's not a bustier, but it's like a leather harness mm-hmm. and uh, and kind of whisper into it a couple of times. And I guess if anybody's paying attention, they'll see the large flaky head of a giant centipede just kind of like poke its head out and kind of move its antennas. Uh-huh. <laughs> Similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll move an 18 pound cat out of the way. <laughs> I'm, yeah, mostly that. Like mostly uh, that. Just kind of hunker down in the shadows and like keep an eye out and like lick her eyeball ne- nervously a couple of times. All right. So yeah, if anyone's paying attention or, or on the lookout, they can make a perception check to spot this. Uh, or is this, always on the lookout. Always on the lookout. The six five two hundred. That's a natural twenty. <laughs> nice. So yeah. <laughs> you spot yep. that giant centipede. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> Interesting okay. place to keep it. <laughs> so where is um, so Baloo has gone off to check out uh, Enoch's uh, stall. Gildan is on his way to the orc wrestlers, and Iki and uh, Mur are keeping an eye on things and just sort mm-hmm. of posted up. How about uh, Ellie? I don't get the impression that Baloo. I think maybe Baloo for did he forget? No, he sent he her over to, to, to Murr and Murr ah. while keeping an eye out. It's trying to find some color that will go with this odd right. skin tone. She's <laughs> like, what about the blue? Yeah, blue might work. What, what do you think about the red? And, then, right. and well, secretly, Murr is shopping for herself as well, but keeping Ellie like inclusive mm-hmm. part of the yeah. loop. Yeah, I think <laughs> Ellie, while she was looking at clothes, she went to the person next to um, her to get those curried crickets. Uh-huh. And she's just going to town. Mm. She's never had anything Snacking. tastier in her life. They're yeah. quite delicious. Mm, oh. I think red is a nicer color. Well, no, I, I think I like the blue one. Mm. But this one would look nice on you. And I pull up like a purplish one. Oh, 
Oh, thank you. I'm rather partial to red myself, but uh, blue might go with your skin tone. Hmm. Yes. Do you have an extra change of clothes? You woke up in the forest, after all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, these are the only clothes I have. Well, let's get you something as well. Let's just to make sure you are taken care of. Uh, oh, okay. Do you need this for it? And I take out my little pouch with like 10 gold. <laughs> no, no, I have it. It is fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because hmm. um. <laughs> Mara has money. So she'll, she'll get like a little, little simple dress for Ellie. She's and a sugar mama. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and for herself, she's actually buying some fancy, like kind of like a leather outfit with some red silk, basically studded leather armor. Um, but fancy and nice. provocative. Yeah, they've got a lot of things like that. I imagine that uh, yeah. a lot of the cloth merchants here probably know Mer very well. Um, and so, you know, they invite you in. Oh, look at what we have. We selected this special thing, kept it aside just for you, that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Gildan. The orcs have set up an impromptu wrestling ring. There's four of them uh, wrestling in uh, a, sort of a tag team style. Um, you, I mean, orcs, they... Um, they decided long ago that worshiping gods like Grumsh had gotten them nowhere. Uh, that Grumsh had just incited hatred and uh, violence in the orcs and kept them from uh, achieving their sort of civilizational greatness. And so they threw off the uh, worship of Grumsh uh, and have embraced a kind of enthusiastic atheism and have a, a sort of a culture based on extreme sports, wrestling, and passionate philosophical debates. Those are my kind of orcs. <laughs> um, all right, so I kind of want to size up. Uh, would I be able to discern if this is a worked match? Are they essentially doing a wrestling that's a sort of performance art, or is this a sincere athletic competition? This is a sincere athletic competition. Okay. Um, they are. They are. You know busting each other's faces and throwing mm. each other around and, and not holding back anything. Cool. It's kind of like a Greek pancration mm -hmm. gladiator. Okay. Uh, I want to start coaching two of the orcs okay. uh, and start to dis sort of discriminate. And while I do it, I'm going to kind of give uh, cutting jibs at the others. I'm going to kind of try to be an eyesore and a distraction the kind of goblin they don't want watching their wrestling match from the outside. <laughs> All right. Um, so you you pick basically picking like one of the partners to to yeah. buddy up to and then talking smack about the others. Yep, yep, yep. All and right. I'm playing it up. And not only that, every now and then, um, uh, if they ever look my way, uh, the two that I am picking on. I'm going to use my thaumaturgy to make uh, my body glow uh, with almost as if uh, the heat of a mirage is coming off of me. Gotcha. Uh, yes. Uh, with a sort of greenish hue. Um, devilish goblin grin. And uh, this is these foolish orcs. <laughs> hey, the the guy that's uh the, the one orc who's there um his name is trill uh deep sort of orcish uh voice and uh he he gets a real kick out of the uh the insults thrown at the other team um and gets in on the act and there's a by now the 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 crowd has kind of like really getting in on on like you know who's gonna wrestle is there anybody else wrestling next you can see like pairs of some mm -hmm. maybe bugbears or hobgoblins who are like thinking about getting in um but the uh the match that you're watching now um i don't know do you have like an, an intimidation check perhaps to see how uh, much you've shaken this uh this opponent or hmm, let me let me take take a check so 
Uh, that's charisma modifier. I'm bad at those. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Freaking nineteen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> twenty minus one at twenty. All right. There we go. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna roll higher than a two tonight. It's gonna be on heckling some orcs. <laughs> right. <laughs> You've really gotten inside this one orc's head, and you just like you. It, there's a moment in the match where he's like got the other orc uh and you know she's down and she's 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 pinned and he looks up and meets eyes with you briefly and you just give him your best insult and he's like momentarily distracted (laughs) you have the same tusks my mother had (laughs) did she loan you her dentures (laughs) He's like, what? Uh, and then the whole match, uh, you know, his opponent slips away from his grip and, uh, and and turns the hold around on him and, like, picks him up and slams him back into the ground. Crowd goes nuts. Um, everybody in the marketplace can uh, can hear the crowd cheering as this uh, as this kind of goes on. Um, Is this close to where Mer and I are? Relatively close, yeah. The, the market's not, like, huge it's sort of circular shaped um and so it's it's there's not many places for uh to go so it's like across the market from where you're at okay can i yeah. head down there yeah uh, absolutely th- do you want to check out that commotion we probably should i i learned that word today seeing as i caused commotion today <laughs> ah that is a good word mm-hmm. there are many things that i could teach you if you're interested sure as you're uh, walking over there, you notice that uh, the wind has noticeably picked up um, at, at this time. The sort of the there's some chimes in the stalls and a bit of sand sort of blows everywhere. There's like a great big gust of wind uh, that rushes through the market. Um, and it, while it dies down, the wind is still pretty steady coming out of the, uh, the southwest. But you guys, it doesn't impede you from getting to the orc wrestling arena. Oh my god. That looks like a lot of fun. Have you, you ever s- tried Do you say that? that out loud? Yeah. Not it, you know, public like this, but I do a form of that professionally. Uh, at really? Night. Yes, yes. There is oh my a- god, that must, that must, you must look like it, such a it badass. It is, um... <laughs> It's more of a horizontal full contact body wrestling, but mm-hmm. you know. Okay, mm-hmm. that's yeah. so. That's oh, that's awesome. That could probably work on a lot of enemies or anybody that's mean to you, right? Yes, it works better than you would imagine. Oh. Yeah, that <laughs> could be one of the things you teach me. I, I'm always open to teaching. There's a, uh, a a bugbear next to the two of you as you're as you're chatting and. With that, he's like not really looking at you. He's paying attention to the match. He's like, you could always go in there if you want, but and he looks and it's like, oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. You are not intruding at all, and I'll just hand him a business card. He takes it. <laughs> <laughs> business card. Like, go in there, like f- fight people, like you and I, or like you two. Um, I, I, usually it's just a uh, one-on-one best uh you know, best your opponent uh, that's all it's about i guess uh used to wrestle myself but then i i injured my knee oh no and i look down at his knee does it look weird or anything he's got an old scar on it okay it's like a um. patch of bald fur and a, a rather nasty looking uh, scar there okay well maybe you could join again I mean, that shouldn't stop you from following your dreams. Unless it's not your dream anymore. He's then... like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I really appreciate it, stranger, who I've never... Uh, don't know who or what you are. Hello, uh, my name is Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Um, my name is, uh, is Roy's. He just strikes up a conversation with you. Yeah. Um, while this has been going on, Baloo, uh, you've found Enoch. I think you're muted. I am now. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. So I, I found Enoch. I, I kind of approach him like, uh, you know, like in Men in Black, like Agent K uh, approaches um, 
the one, the bulldog. Anyway, I'm I'm coming up to him. I'm like, hey, how's it going, Enoch? Um, it's good to see that you set up uh, set up shop again. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Is there uh, anything I can interest you in? Perhaps some new reading material. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe. Um, by the way, what uh, what is he like? Um, so Enoch is him. a uh, a middle aged hobgoblin. You can see he's got uh, graying hair at the temples. Um, keeps himself fairly uh, well dressed, well uh, well groomed. Um, he's a, a permanent resident of Trade Town, so he doesn't live in the wastelands or in one of the small villages. He he lives here in town. Um, very, uh, you know him to be a perfectly law-abiding and respectful citizen who has an intense curiosity about all things Arcana. Yeah. That's, you know, I gotta identify with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, in that case, I'm not gonna shake him down, you know. I'm not I'm not there to, to make his day terrible. Yeah. Uh, but I would like to know what he's selling. Um, I'm gonna look over my shoulder first to make sure that uh, the, the Dadvi's not, like, tailing me. But... And no, her back's turned. She's watching the orc match uh, okay. from the from the back edge of the crowd. Yeah, I'm not looking for an employee evaluation right now. Right. Um, so yeah, I'll ask him what he's got that's uh, interesting, and I will I will raise my giant furry eyebrows up and down. Yes. Um, he. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, certainly nothing that you should be concerned about. And he kind of like takes a a, a piece of cloth and uncovers a bunch of like just broken crystals and a, uh, a, 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 a like a, there's a scroll tube there um, that looks like it has something in it um, some books um, mostly it's just odds and ends um, things like that um, and he invites you says please blue uh, peruse all you like inspect what you need to I know that uh, well I know that I know why you're here so I won't mm -hmm. begrudge you that, but I'm not doing anything wrong. No, no, you're not. I totally understand. Would you mind if I, uh, if I, you know, more officially checked your wares? Of course. The standard practice. Uh, but of course, and he gestures towards uh, towards his wares. Um, it's that uh, it's at this time that the wind has started to uh, pick up. Uh, and is really kind of just like blowing through the market. Um, it's caused quite a bit of uh, stir on, on those stalls that are along kind of like the southern edge of the market. A lot of people are going to like cover over the, their wares and, and, and tie down their tents and things like that. Hmm. Um, those of you at the uh, at the orc wrestling match, it sort of like catches you in your back. You sort of like feel the wind and the sand and the grit uh, as it uh, gusts through the market on your uh, on your backs. And um, let's see. So, give me a recap. How's everybody? Uh, what's everybody up to right now? Um, I'm starting to uh, form a betting line. Like I'm letting everyone know what the odds are, <laughs> yeah. And if they want to uh, stake wages, now I I won't wage against them, but I'll help arrange and negotiate bets between the people because this is a healthy exercise. Sure, sure. Okay. Sure. Then what's a bit of side gambling on a on a wrestling match? Yes, absolutely. Side gambling—that's all it is. <laughs> um. And then, uh, so how about uh, Icky? Are you still just kind of maintaining your distance and looking out? Icky had been maintaining her distance, but when they got up to go to the wrestling match, Icky decided that this was enough cover inside of the herd that she could approach without it seeming strange now that there's like a betting line showing up and people are like all taking their food over there. So she and uh, Skitter Step are gonna go ahead and kind of like slither their way through the crowd just to get a little bit closer and see um, what sort of like armoring or natural protections that this prey would have on them. Mm -hmm. And also to see how many wardens are in the area besides the two that she's already seen. 
Gotcha. So you get close enough, and I think Ellie is wearing uh, scale armor, sort of like uh, leather with a metal uh, scales on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you notice at least two uh, wardens, uh, Mur standing close to Ellie, and then Dodvi is further away, but within eyesight of the two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and go ahead and make me a perception check for see what else that you spot. Can I roll for uh, Skitter Step too? Absolutely. Well, I got a four. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Skitter Step got a six. <laughs> so. <laughs> You see what you see. Uh, you know the the crowd's uh, fairly large in terms of uh, in terms of how crowds go, um, but you don't notice any other wardens or or anything else like that. Um, the wind is still uh, picked up, and at this point, it has gotten um, to be quite disruptive. The 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 tents in the middle of the uh, of the market the, where all the food's being prepared. They're covering up their fire pits. Many of them have already gone out. They're covering up the uh, the food that they have. And the the wrestling match here, um, the the two combatants are sort of like, you know, about one's about to just like get the other in a hole they can't escape from, and they kind of stop um, as this wind just starts to like blow over tents and knock down some of the smaller. Uh, the smaller people that are here in the marketplace. Like that. Are these yeah. these winds unusual for this time of year, like area that we're at. Yeah, there's it's everybody. Or if you're if you're proficient in it, you can give me a nature roll. I'm not sure if anybody is proficient in it, but for those of you that live here, it it doesn't usually get this bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah there's something definitely um different about this wind for most of the day icky you've noticed that it's been a slight breeze coming in out of the west and um this is like i said a a gale force winds coming in uh Mm. from out of the uh the southwest Mm. so there's something about it that uh that last gust has caught you have I, is it something that I would have noticed being in the yellow wastes before? Yeah, so those of you who are travelers of the wastes and who've spent a lot of time there, um, there's all sorts of strange weather phenomenon that, uh, that's out there. Um, everything up from just like your standard uh, flesh, <laughs> flesh rending sandstorm to, uh, you know, storms of a magical nature. And this has the this has the feeling of that. You can taste it on your tongue. There's uh, there's some kind of magic afoot in this in, wind. In that mm-hmm. case, um, there's going to be that warm glow from that pocket, and mm-hmm. like that little subtle whispering that's like, <coughs> and she's just going to start retreating okay. into more solid building. Type. Yeah, out on the on the periphery of the marketplace there are like low buildings um, and then uh, just along like the southern edge of town is an old wall that was here whenever they founded the city. Um, that's probably the most secure place that uh, that you can see. So you make your way there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm How not going to every- say anything to anyone either. I'm just going <laughs> to You're just going to ghost them. Absolutely. <laughs> How about everybody else? <laughs> um, Mer's going to kind of put a, a protective arm around Ellie and be like, my dear, I believe there is a sandstorm or some sort of phenomenon approaching. Perhaps we should find cover of some sort. That sounds good to me. Yeah, people are running for buildings and, sh- and shelter right now. Mm-hmm. Mer will Mer- escort mm-hmm. Ellie because she doesn't want to let her out of her sight because she was kind of told to keep an eye on and, you know, mm. get her some, to some safe shelter. <laughs> How about uh, Gildan and Baloo? Um, Gildan is going to begin singing a forbidden tune uh, in the language of his uh, teacher, one of the witches of the waste, uh, of which he belonged to as the winds are coming in. And in his song, he is going to thank the storm for coming thank the storm for cleansing the land thank the storm for uh warding off predators 
And with that, he is essentially going to uh, tuck up real small, throw his desert blanket over himself, and curl up into a tiny goblin ball and attempt to take refuge from the storm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just let it pass over. Uh, yes. How about Baloo? Enoch's <clears throat> tent has blown over, and he's, like, <clears throat> scrambling after loose scrolls and other baubles. Um... Blue would tell him, you know, you know, seek shelter. Good luck. In, in other words, he's he's not going to help. You're on your um, own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Blue might have encountered some of this um, before in his travels in his youth. Uh, would he know if this is an arcane storm? Uh, you can make me an Arcana check now. I mean, the winds now have really picked up and they're sustained. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you can make me an Arcana check instead of a nature check for this one. Okay, uh, 19. Yeah, uh, you, you you feel it maybe on the back of your neck or, or just that warden's instinct that you have um, that this is not a natural uh, phenomenon here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then yeah, I'll I'll head towards shelter as well. Um, okay. If there's if there's anyone if there's anyone tiny on the way, I can pick them up and take them with me. <laughs> I mean, you see Mur and Ellie uh, making for shelter. I think probably Icky got out of here before uh, anyone else did and is uh, on her own. I'll you'll have to make a perception check to spot uh, Skil Gildan though. <laughs> uh, a twelve. I don't know. Are you? I mean, let's say that. What's Gildan's dexterity? Like, what's your passive stealth? My passive stealth would be twelve. Twelve. It, for a minute, you think you might be an overturned basket, uh, <laughs> but uh, as you pass by, you notice Gildan uh, bracing uh, himself. Hello, I smell you. Please take uh, me wherever you're going. Yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of just reach down, put him under my arm, and, uh, and keep walking. Okay. Thank you, Balu. I nuzzle my head on his bugbear. <laughs> <hand. laughs> As yep. you're rushing across the courtyard, the wind's picking up. Uh, a, a, a stall made of just like wood lashed together goes like tumbling in front of you. Uh, make me a, uh, a dexterity save for both uh, Balu and Gildan. Mm. DC for this can be 11. I got a 13. Good. Yeah, I got a 14. Uh, you managed to narrowly avoid this thing as it tips and goes careening through the marketplace. And um, it's at that moment that there's a peal of thunder uh, that ripples through and sort of like that kind of thunder that shakes you right here that you can feel more than here. And towards the southwest, uh, these storm clouds have gathered and they're dark, sort of ominous. Um, and you can see something large and uh, geometric in the middle of the clouds sort of manifesting or appearing in the sky. Hmm. That's what Baloo and Gildan can see as they make their way towards the shelter. Um, screw that. I, I hate <laughs> flying. No, I hate flying black pyramids. I've wiped players with those things. It's, I don't... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blue might, uh, like, you know, uh, raising his voice over the, the wind, Blue would tell Gildan, uh, Heretic, do you know what that is? Um, first off, I am not a heretic. I am wise. Later. Uh, do I know what that is? Can I make a check? I'm, uh, historically, am I aware of it, or religiously? Have I seen something like this in the waste? I lived out there for 10 years. You did live out there for 10 years and where you discovered many secrets. Um, let's go with history for this one. Not bad. I got a 16. 16. The The world as you know it has been a, um, a planar crossroads for quite some time. Uh, it's notoriously uh, amongst the, the, the wise witches of the wastes. Uh, notoriously easy to summon things here uh, in fact it's quite dangerous to do so because not exactly what you call might come through uh, and so planar travelers uh, moving something this big through uh, the planar membranes would be trivially easy comparatively speaking so you know that you know that much about this thing um, 
let's see, Mur and Iki and Ellie, you all are at the moment are in shelter someplace. Um, and are not don't really have a good view of the sky to see what's going on. But you can see um, you know, people are running every which way to get out of the storm. The wind is blowing down the stalls and has basically like just completely flattened um, the market there. Um, what are y'all uh, what are y'all doing right now? Flirting. <laughs> Watching her flirt. <laughs> You're not, are you flirting with me or somebody else? Everybody. Oh, okay. Everybody. Yeah. I just think she's very friendly and everybody seems to like her. There's a few like nervous goblins nearby that don't know what to make of this. They're like, they're like, I was, is everything okay? We don't, I, you know, and being a, they know you also as a warden, as someone who's mm-hmm. in, in a position of authority. Like, yeah. Are, are we going to be all right? Is this another? I am sure everything will be fine. We just have to wait out for the storm to pass, that is all. Oh, okay. All right. And they just kind of like nervously look around. As, uh, There's the anyone owls. who looks like they have some coin that is especially nervous. She's going to be like, listen, I could make all of this stress just melt away for a very <laughs> low, low price. <laughs> Am I am I hunkered down in the same place? Um, yeah, I I thought you had kind of like left. Which direction did you go in when you slinked off? Um, I mean, she's been there before, so she'd probably find like the nearest, biggest, sturdiest building. Okay, okay, you're not far from where they're taking shelter then. Okay, um, but I'm gonna say you're you're closer towards the southern edge than anyone okay. else. Cool. I'm cool with that. Um, then Icky is actually going to like hunker down in a corner and start uh, like she's going to go ahead and pull Skitter Step out to to scout and see like if there are cracks in, you know, if there are cracks in the building that he can like Skitter up to and like kind of report back. Mm-hmm. But also she's going to start um, consulting with the warm glow inside of her harness and try gotcha. and get some guidance try and get some guidance you um there are cracks in the building and like underneath the door and along like say uh, where the uh, say a window frame doesn't quite fit in with the uh the mud brick of the house um that skitter step can enter into and, and kind of get a better view of what's going on mm-hmm. your warm glow um tells you it, it gives you an overwhelming sense of danger and of uh, of, of being hunted um, it's not a sensation you're used to feeling I think no it's very confusing to Icky Icky doesn't really like Icky understands being prey but not being like, singular prey for a single entity mm-hmm. there's a uh, Icky can hear now on the wind a, a high pitched whining that accompanies the uh, sort of the, the, the howl of the winds um, in between sort of flashes of greenish kind of lightning that light up the sky. That's a negative Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, uh, how about Baloo and Gildan? You guys have made it to shelter. Um, what are y'all doing? Well, Gildan... Here we are again, hunkering down. Yeah, the pyramid is fully emerged from the cloud and is hovering uh, somewhere in the distance. Mm. I think we must learn what dwells within that pyramid. Knowledge would be quite good for us to Yeah, looks pretty far away though. Maybe it is very close and perhaps quite tiny. <laughs> I, I don't I don't doubt that that's possible. Gildan, this is why I like you. Because you ask the good questions, the tough questions. Uh, do you want to go out there and find it right now? Uh, we have just traveled here. If we were to poke at it uh, ten minutes ago would have been the time to do that. So... <laughs> It's, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I'm so curious about it that I think 
I must discover what it is. Why don't you watch from a safe distance and I will get its attention? Okay. All right. If you're sure. All right. Um, I'm going to go out. Uh, am I able to see uh, the pyramid in the sky? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can brace yourself against the wind and, and see the pyramid. I begin singing in a tongue not heard uh, by the ears of uh, those that dwell in this forsaken land. Um, a song that only I know, a song that was taught to me in the waste. And as I sing this, uh, I use my thaumaturgy to uh, swirl the sand around my feet and to change the pigment of my skin to a bright electric pink. Um, and I am approaching the pyramid in this fashion with uh, open hands and empty palms. Okay. Um, this is, Gildan's pretty visible <laughs> as, he, uh, as he walks forward and um, eventually everyone can see him as he walks sort of out of the uh, marketplace area through the buildings uh, that sort of make up the perimeter of Trade Town, um, and here pretty soon it'll be beyond the uh, beyond the limits of the city. Um, as you walk forward, you see that the uh, the pyramid itself is hovering, what seems to be low to the ground. It's maybe, uh, if you had to guess, uh, and you're sort of your wasteland senses tell you that it's probably about a mile or so away and um, other than that it's hard to make out the, the the sand in the air is making everything very hazy very difficult to see you're kind of having to brace your eyes against the uh, the grit and dirt that's flying at you um, mm -hmm. so how far out does Gildan walk okay um, Gildan walks out about mm, the length of a football field so he yeah. goes about a quarter mile uh -huh. um, he begins to uh, use the divine magic that is within him and calls out the thunderous voice of a witch of the storm raising the volume of his voice three times he continues to call out the song towards the pyramid all right. Um, everyone else can see Gildan disappear into what's looking to be a, a giant uh, sandstorm that's building up and coming towards the city. Um, and then sometime after you see him disappear, you can hear him uh, singing in this, uh, in this language of the wastes. And um, see what uh, everybody else does before we figure out what Gildan finds out there. Um, how about uh, Ellie? What is, what is Ellie up to? Yeah, so I think seeing as there's lots of people talking outside, she'll kind of poke her head out from where she was kind of hiding. Mm -hmm. And she sees, does she see him? Does this pink glow? She sees him as he disappears into the, the dust and sand uh, as he walks out of Trade Town. Okay. Uh, I go to Mirror and I'm like, hey, you're, I think your friend just walked in to the sandstorm. Is it going to be okay? Does it do this? Why is he like this? Um, we be worried? I do not think it is a cause to be worried if he wants to commit suicide by walking out in a sandstorm. That is none of my business. I am playing into my character's flaws and bonds, by the way. <laughs> yes. uh, it is well, in that case, a personal <laughs> quest, I believe, at this point. There is nothing we can do for him, but uh, remember him fondly. All right, I'll remember him as 37-year-old child. Gilden. Gilden's Gilden. son of the Kai, called the wise. Called the wise. Uh, um, are, are, are we doing a party, a party centered inspiration? Uh, well, th I, I think, you know, if, if uh, you see something that uh, is inspirational in one of your fellow players, then speak up and we can award inspiration that way. But I do think that Gildan's walking into the sandstorm un 
unarmed, brightly colored, and loud is worthy of an inspiration. I, I second that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so does anyone else uh, uh, go after him, react, make a note? <laughs> Mara notes that he's probably dead now, shrugs, uh. and moves on with, with flirting and making sure, like, comforting, and, you know. The making usual. sure everybody's okay yeah. and things like that. <laughs> does does Icky by any chance would would she remember like what he was wearing if he was carrying any valuables or anything like that? I think so. Yeah, he seemed to have a lot of. Uh, Icky would on. love to make a note of where he likely died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. What sort of trinkets and baubles does uh, Gildan keep on him? Okay. Gold. Uh, Gildan is wearing what he has done, the ceremonial armor of the wise, which he designed and constructed himself uh, out of odds and ends that he collected over his 10 years in the desert. Uh, he has a beautiful shield uh, with the face of a uh, ghostly woman on it. Uh, she has pale skin, long, uh, stark white hair, and the eyes of an alien being. He uh, has a necklace made out of uh, teeth, but each tooth on the necklace is made out of a different predator. Uh, and he also has a, a ring on each finger, but each ring is made out of uh, the skin of a different humanoid. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how far away is, is Gildan? Uh, he disappeared uh, right around the time he left the, the edge of the town. So the town itself is situated on the uh, on the right bank of the uh, river that runs through here. And there's like a, a small palisade that surrounds it. But this being market day, all the gates are open. All of the, uh, you know, they, they're inviting people in. So it's quite easy to just walk out uh, of the city. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I... I feel like maybe, uh, maybe he shouldn't kill himself right now. Um, uh, I'm okay. So I'm going to, uh, you know, damn it, Gildan, um, and Blue will invoke. He concentrates for a moment, mm -hmm. closes his eyes, and imagines the war beast surviving the uh, the sands. Um, he's going to invoke the spirit of a massive war beast, this this beetle rhinoceros thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to he's gonna put that around him, just in front of him. And then he's also going to take the form of that, of that, like, war beast thing. Mm -hmm. And so, the, uh, <clears throat> and it's visible, you can see it. It's like, it's like, uh, you know, it's like stretched out over, <laughs> over this losery image of this. this war beast. So, like, the, he's, he calls upon the spirit of the uh, of the war beast to grant him. What, is this what your like your wild shape kind of looks like and how it manifests? So. Well, I'm I'm also doing uh, the spirit totem. So ah, I'm, the spirit I'm invoking totem. the bear spirit totem. Ah, uh, the war beast. So that I'm I'm getting some extra HP and yeah. also advantages on strings. But more importantly, I'm going to go out there as some big thing that's hard to knock over and try. As um, yeah. Blue shape changes, and he looks like he's about to go out. Murr's gonna walk over, kind of just pat him on his haunch, and be like, "Don't die. Good luck eating the goblin." And uh, we'll be uh, crossing our fingers here for you. And uh, I will inspire him. Right. Uh, nice. <laughs> and then she'll walk back and pull out her sitar and start playing um, "Sandstorm" by Darude. <laughs> yes. Like calm people down, you know. Play right. some upbeat <laughs> sitar. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so Baloo goes into the sandstorm after uh, everybody kind of sees this. Y'all are some of the only people like left out. A lot of people like run inside and are trying to uh, to seek uh, more secure shelter. Uh, Dadvi is out there as well, and it looks like she's got uh, she's rounded up sort of a, a posse to help people get to shelter if they need it and uh, otherwise help out. Gildan, you're out there. And it's just this high-pitched whine that sort of undulates and, and you know, has variable uh, pitch. Uh, and you think you see things traveling quickly 
through the, the sand and the dust that's kicked up all around you. Uh, there's occasionally you're buffeted by a, uh, a, a blast of wind that uh, rattles your your uh, your armor and, and sets you back a couple of steps. Um, uh, am I able to discern at all uh, what looks to be moving? It looks like something's flying through the, uh, through the sand uh, very quickly, maybe pairs of them. Uh, there's shapes, geometric in nature, just beyond the edge of your vision. Um, okay. But though they are the sources of the uh, the high pitched whine that you can hear. All right, um, I am going to nimble escape, which is a goblin feature, and essentially hide um, mm -hmm. myself um, and just observe closely. And I'm dropping the thaumaturgy, and I'm no longer singing. Uh, they they clearly uh, would know where I was or am. But at this point, uh, I want to do the seeing from the observation. Okay. Perhaps even misdirect them. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make me a stealth roll for that. Sure. We're using real dice, not roll 20. Oh, and I rolled one of my nice dice. So, nice. Uh, 15. 15. Now they uh, see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you notice there's you're you're hiding for a, a maybe a minute or two before you can see what for all the world looks like a pair of large flying daggers um, they have a strong sort of triangular angular shape to them and there are riders humanoid in size um, sitting on what look like saddles attached to these sort of large triangular points in front of this. They're flying maybe 10 feet off the ground very fast. And just looking at them gives you that uh, familiar headache of looking at uh, powerful magic. And they fly like right by you. They don't seem to notice no. uh, where you are. Not very large. Um, let's see. Uh, what tricks have I got up my sleeve? Um, how fast are they uh, uh, traveling beyond me? Like, uh, what's their speed? Their their speed is basically sixty feet around. They're traveling pretty fast. Um, they kind of like zip by you. Your visibility at this point is probably about ten feet, given the uh, the sand yeah. that's in there. Um, I'm essentially going to attempt. Now, I'm not very large, and if they're about 10 feet in the air, I only come off the ground about 3 feet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a waste goblin in a blanket. So uh, I'm essentially going to mm, kind of dash and tail them and, and just kind of, uh, you know, let them get about 120 feet in front of me before I start running to keep pace. Okay, so you're going to wait a couple seconds before they, they pass and then tail them okay so um you uh you come out of your hiding place and uh begin chasing after them blue as you are uh rushing into this building sandstorm it's kind of approaching uh trade town like a like a, a, a sandy wall <laughs> um you two can hear this high-pitched whining on the air and can uh, start to see these geometric angular shapes in the uh, in the sand, and uh, give me a feel for how you're uh, approaching the situation, Blue. Well, Blue's looking for Gildan. Um, <clears throat> he knows stuff. He knows something is up, but mm -hmm. um, he's you know he just decided to do this. Just kind of worked up the the um. It, it takes him a <laughs> Didn't minute. Quite to quite think it through. <laughs> no, no, it takes him a minute to budge, and then once he budges, he just kind of goes for it. Gotcha. Um, you know. Like a like a bear going down a hill. Mm -hmm. So so blue is is rushing forward looking for Gildan. Um, if he sees something else like coming directly at him, he would like try to like hit it out of the way. But for the most part, he's 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 on a mission. Okay. So you see um, you see the same sort of uh, thing in the, in the uh, the sand. It looks like a 
for all the world, a, a giant flying dagger with a saddle attached to the end of it, which has a, uh, like I said, a, a, a vaguely humanoid-sized rider. Um, as one of them passes by you, they're, they're coming they're in pairs. Mm -hmm. As a pair of them pass by you, you can see that one of them kind of like peels back around and loops and is coming back towards your way. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably have just a couple of seconds before it will be uh, it will be on you. Um, it's definitely sharp looking. Yes, definitely sharp looking and big as well. Big. Uh, they're flying about ten feet above the ground, and um, you got a good look at one of them as it was sort of like passing by you, mm -hmm. and it looks like these sort of twin blades that come out to a point. Um, the rider sort of saw you. And it looks like they have uh, maybe a lance or, or some kind of long spear sort of stowed away underneath it. And then on one side of one of the points was a long uh, metal tube that came off the, uh, off the thing. Okay. That's the scientific term for it, tube. the thing. Okay, the thing. Uh, yeah, no, I would, um, you know, using my bonus action to keep my my totem following me. Mm -hmm. um, I'd use my regular action to dodge. I want to see what this thing does. So you're going to go ahead and dodge. Yeah. Let's go ahead and roll initiative to see which one of us gets to go first. And uh, let's everybody give me initiative so that we will have that. Beautiful. And uh, let's see what happens. All right. I got 17. 17 for blue. Anybody beat a 17? Anybody got I got a 19. 17? 19. 22. I got about, a 12. And Gildan? 10. I got a 6. So that will tell you how this goes. <laughs> uh, so initiative order is Murr, Ellie, Baloo, Icky, Gildan, myself. Um, now, for the moment, we're just going to stick with myself and Baloo, uh, and then everybody will fold in as they uh, get to the action. Um, Baloo, you will have the opportunity to act before it gets to you, but you can see it coming around and yeah. uh, is heading right towards you. Hmm. Okay. Heading right for me. You're dodging? You're still dodging? Uh, I think so. If, if it's not a new round, then yeah, I'm going to stick with dodging. Okay. So you're dodging, and what you see is that this thing uh, speeds towards you. And you can see the rider on it. It, it you get a good look at this uh, humanoid. It has large, round, red eyes and kind of a skull face. Um, its body is crimson and, or its skin at least, looks crimson and uh, and just dull gray at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and as it approaches you, you can see it grab something from uh, underneath the saddle, and then. It disappears as its dagger thing flies straight at you, and it the rider reappears on the ground. Ah. Uh, so let me see. Actually, you are dodging, um, and you easily dodge out of the way of this thing as it uh, goes sailing for about 10 feet in the air and lances straight for you. Uh, you dodge out of the way as it's too... Uh, blades kind of stick into the ground where you were standing and advancing towards you is this humanoid with a, uh, a large looking pole arm in its, uh, in its grasp. Um, Raiders. Yes. Gildan, um, you can kind of vaguely make out what's going on ahead of you. Mm -hmm. You will be there uh, within, within the next round. Okay. Um, now, just out of curiosity, uh -huh. um, I was attempting to maintain a distance of 120 feet ish. Okay. Uh, if I have maintained that distance, I would be able to take an action this round. Uh, Correct. But I leave that up to you to adjudicate. Uh, you could take an action, but you can't really see anything. Uh, you can kind of hear it. You can see vague shapes in the sand, um, but getting a good enough line of sight is going to be uh, impossible, right? Without getting closer. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that. Cool. Um, anyone else want to do anything? You guys are you hear you hear a loud crash coming from somewhere in the uh, sandstorm. 
everyone else does. Am I getting any guidance or anything from my whispers? Your whispers are, um, your whispers are telling you to hide and it's giving you sort of mixed signals as well. Um, you're getting a sense of, of both to, uh, to, to fight back, to not be cornered and not allow yourself to become prey. But there's a strong instinct in your, uh, in this, uh, strong instinct to hide as well. So it seems as though it's, uh, it's conflicted itself. You can definitely see, like the, he said a quarter mile out to go into the storm, right? Is it still a quarter mile out? You said we can hear crashing and stuff. You can hear crashing, difficult to see now, given that the sandstorm has almost hit the, uh, hit trade town. Um, but it hasn't been that long since Gildan walked out into the sand. Um, it's probably doubtful that he made it a full quarter mile before uh, you heard the crash noise. Um, Icky's gonna hold. Okay. Uh, how about Murr? Murr is gonna see, uh, she heard the crash and she's just gonna kind of sigh and she's gonna continue playing her sitar. She's gonna kind of walk over to a window or maybe if there's like like a second story kind of go up there so she can get a good vantage point and if anything that doesn't look like Baloo or Gildan is walking up here she's either gonna like she's gonna low-key defend the people in here whether that be with her her bow or dagger or maybe casting a spell Uh oh (gasps) goodness uh (laughs) so uh, from the second story, you do get a better vantage point, and you think you can see Baloo's uh, shaggy self um, okay. out just outside of town. Okay. Um, what's going on? I'll, I'll keep a good eye on that, and if anything looks like it's going to go at him, too. Uh, how far away is he about? Uh, let's say he's probably about uh, 200 feet away. Okay. From where you're at. Uh, and then, Ellie, are you sticking with Burr? Yeah, I think okay. so. I think whatever she does... Uh, Ellie will definitely follow. Okay. Um, Baloo, it's your turn. Um, so this war beast shape that I have, um, that, that I shifted into, any particular uh, suggestions you would say for what creature it would represent? You're talking about, like, mechanically which ones. I think that you should just pick an animal and then describe it as a post-apocalyptic war beast, as you decide. I, I think that's good. I think yeah. that's good. Um, Let's just, re- just reskin it. So for now, it, what we're talking about here is uh-huh. a giant sand badger, basically, <laughs> right. like uh, like Sand Shrew from Pokemon. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in which case, uh, this person's coming at me. Um, I know when. Yes. Yeah. So you get a better look at him, right? And it's uh, definitely humanoid, probably about the size of a scrawny hobgoblin, um, lean and you know, athletic looking, but menacing as well. Um, mm-hmm. It still has these large circular red eyes and sort of a skull face, whereas the rest of it is covered in this dark red and gray, uh, looks like scaled uh, sort of skin. Um, okay. And it grasps its pole arm and it's definitely meaning to do you harm. All right. I, about um, 30 feet away. Okay. I, I moved the pole 30 feet and, uh, and war beast it out. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I come in with a bite and a nasty little gross little claw. <laughs> a gross, gross little claw. sand badger claw. Gross little claw. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's going to be... Uh, let's see. I am blanking on exactly how shifting works. It's been too long. It's been too long. <laughs> uh, I think it's an action, and the, unless you're a moon druid, uh, in which case it's a bonus action. Oh, and you don't get multi-attack, right? Uh, no. Well, okay. you take you get the stats of the beast. Okay. Well, I'm actually just going for a uh, a nice claw then. Okay. Uh, so fifteen. All right. Uh, fifteen. Your claw rakes across uh, this uh, its skin, its scaled skin, and as it rakes across, you can feel that this is uh, metallic. Um, that it's that it's uh, it's its scales are perhaps an armor as opposed to uh, skin. Mm. Um, because you can hear the uh, the scrape of metal on it, and Gildan, at this point, you can hear the sounds of uh, of fighting coming from up ahead. Uh, does fifteen hit? Fifteen does not hit. 
Okay. It doesn't do damage. You just uh, slash across its armor. Gotcha. gotcha. Do I see him attacking something from me watching out the window? Yeah, you can see you can see the uh, blue and, and you can see like maybe the top, uh, the sh- head and shoulders and pole arm of his uh, his fellow combatant. Could I try to shoot at it with my bow? Uh, yeah. Um, yes. Okay. It's gonna be at disadvantage because of the range, but I'm gonna right. try. Yeah. All right. Well, that is a sixteen. And that's an 18, so it'd be 16. Uh, 16 misses. Okay. Uh, an arrow flies in blue uh, and lands fairly close to where you're at, um, but uh, but misses its, uh, its mark. Uh, Gildan, it's your turn. All right. How close am I to the combatants? Um, if you said you were about 120 feet out, I'd say if you, you moved forward last round, then yeah, you're like... Yeah, uh, Then you're like... Um, so you're like 30 feet away from him. Okay, so here's what I would like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to uh, move up onto one of these raider bogies. Uh, I'm drawing my war hammer, and I'm going to make an attack. And then after that, I'd like to take a bonus action. Okay. So um, I rolled a 23 to hit. 23 hits. All, All right. right. Uh, so that'll be uh, D8 my modifier, which isn't that high. <laughs> That's seven points of damage, and then I'm going to use Fury of the Small to pump another three points of damage into it. Yeah. Okay. In total. And then, as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon, and this appears to look like a hideous hag puppet, floating spectrally, holding a comical oversized Warhammer, and it's going to start <laughs> puppet clubbing onto yes. it. The head. Like a yes. Punch and Judy doll? Literally like a Punch and <laughs> Judy doll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, baby. Seize them, Baba Yaga! Alright. Uh, 17 to hit. 17 hits as well. Alright, so... That dice. It's the same damage die. Why did I put it away? Uh, 7 points of damage, just like the other one. Yeah, when you connect with your Warhammer, you can feel flesh and blood under there and Woo-hoo! you know bones snapping. Um, and the uh, it doesn't seem like this uh, this warrior was had quite noticed you were there till the last minute. So he's like taken a gu- taken off guard as uh, as the uh, faces two of you now. I stare and, my teeth at him, <laughs> and you see him sort of like drop into a defensive stance and swivel his head between the two of you and then uh, disappear in a puff of sand and uh, Baloo and Gildan are alone in the sandstorm. Mm. It is top of the initiative so Mir, you'd, I, I would take it that the last round you'd use basically a readied action mm-hmm. um, so it's now uh, this third round of combat, it's your turn. Uh, is the guy still up? I back up for a second. Make me a perception check. Okay. I don't knock my dice box off my desk. Uh, 18. <laughs> 18. You can see um, just beyond uh, where Baloo and Gildan had first engaged it. Um, it reappears a short mm-hmm. distance away and looks like it's trying to use the cover of the sand. To sneak to... back up on them? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, she's going to try to shoot at it then uh, with okay. her bow. And she's still playing her sitar while she does it, but the sitar has like, one looser string on it, and that's what she uses to pull an arrow back and release. Nice. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, well, that's a natural 19, but it's a disadvantage. Oh, no. Ooh, okay. A 20. 20 hits. Yes. Oh, it says I get to roll damage now. Oh, yay. Okay. Um, that will be seven points of damage. Seven piercing points damage. damage. And I would like to use um, Psychic Blades. Mm-hmm. Use another use as my inspiration to add two more d6 damage to it. Okay. Um, well, that's not a lot. That That's uh, five extra psychic damage. So you can see uh, as your arrow strikes true and you imbue it with this uh, psychic energy. What is, is it like, how does that, uh, tell me a bit about how that uh, works or what that looks like for Mira. She kind of just starts kind of humming along as she plays her music and then under her breath, just whispers a few words in Infernal. Um, and 
the era once released kind of has a little aura of like fire and smoke coming off of it as it strikes its target. Nice. <laughs> uh, you see it hit, and it's a pretty telling wound. Uh, visibly, you can see that uh, this warrior, um, you know, reacts, drops one hand from his uh, from his pole arm and grasps its side where your arrow hit. Um, Ellie, you see all of this if you're with uh, with Mer. She's, uh, you know, she's taking aim at uh, at something out there that you can barely make out. Okay. Um... How far is it from me? It's pretty far right now. It would probably take you uh, at least two rounds if all you did was like just run out there as fast as you can uh, to get out there. Yeah, okay. I think Ellie would do that because she's seeing her new friend Baloo get attacked. So yes. she's definitely just going to sprint right in. Okay. Um, then you will be there. If you use all of your move, you'll, you'll be there within uh, two rounds. Cool. Yeah, I do okay. that. Uh, Baloo, it's your turn. Um, uh, do we see uh, Do we see this thing yet? You can make me a perception check to try to spot it in the sand. Yeah. Hey, uh, 19 plus 4, so 23. 23, yeah, it's about uh, 30 feet or so uh, off to your left. Um, you saw another, maybe one of, uh, maybe saw another one of... Uh, Mer's arrows strike into it, and a, 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 a you know a small grunt uh, come from that direction. But you can sort of see where it's at. Uh, do I uh, does it take an action to do that? Uh, no, that's just what you see. Okay, um, then I'm gonna I'm gonna rush back over there, and um, this time I'm gonna try to like bite it and pen it. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. if I can do that all in one round, but so I'm gonna try to get my teeth in it. You could use the attacks that the beast has. The beast has extra attacks, so you can just use them. You are that beast. Mm -hmm. rolls. Uh, some rolls. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. That's all right. Natural 20. Nice. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, let me, let me roll damage first. <laughs> a one and a two, so four... Uh, four damage on that crit, and um, that's fun. And so, but I got a hold of him, and I, I bit him, and I'm just gonna keep biting him. Maybe I got his uh, his leg. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a medium sized dirt badger, you know. I'm a pretty, I'm pretty big. So hopefully, I, I got a hold of him. I don't, don't have any kind of special grapple or anything. I feel like I got you, uh, but you're but you're trying to like pin him in place and keep him from mm -hmm. from moving again. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. um, Icky, it's your turn. All right, they haven't moved like too far away from me now, have they? Has the not too far? Is... No. Can I no. still see you? Uh, from where you'd have to kind of like climb up onto the roof of the. But Skitter the... Step can see you. Like... Skitter Step can sense them out there. Awesome, them out. because. If there's one thing that Icky loves, it's a it's a drastically unfair fight, which is what this has now become. <laughs> so uh, ignoring the better judgment, Icky is also going to leap into the into the fight, like leave the safety of the home and mm -hmm. and join in a a now very one sided hunt. Okay, uh, if you use all of your movement, uh, you'll be there next round. Okay. <laughs> Um, so if you just like Paul, and you can even see like Ellie doing the same. She's like right on your heels. Awesome. I'm going to grab up Skitter Step and do that. Okay. And uh, Gildan. It's your turn. All right. Um, can Gildan see any adversaries or see where Baloo has uh, trapped an adversary or does he need to look around? You saw the direction that Baloo ran off into and heard okay. a giant badger roar oh okay um am i able to see any of the other party members or am i obscured from the uh they're obscured from you okay for the time, yeah. uh i'm going to attempt to find a bogey within uh like a 20 foot uh radius of where i'm at okay um, so i got a 12 for perception you can see that there's another pair of these uh these things flying in low 
they're probably uh, 30 feet uh, from you from where you're at right now. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Bane uh, on those targets. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will need to make a charisma saving throw DC 14. Okay. See, no, those are two fails. Okay, so now uh, when they make attack rolls or saving throws, uh, they must subtract 1d4 from what they roll. All right. And I now have concentration up. Okay. And with that, I'm going to uh, hide as a bonus action. I got 17 to hide just to try to remain unseen. Okay. Um, so yeah, you pull your cloak back over you and uh, dig down into the sand a bit. Um, that makes it my turn. And so, um, Baloo, you're uh, biting and kind of wrestling with this uh, with this creature. Uh, it takes sort of a, a step back and pivots and brings its pole arm uh, into uh, to attack you. So. Here we go. Your AC is 15, yes? Uh, not as a giant badger. Oh, then what is your AC as a giant badger? 10. 10? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, then I hit you twice. That's good. That's good. Is it? Is it? It's great. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, so he brings this uh, wickedly curved pole arm uh, down on you in two quick, uh, two quick stices and is trying to like fend you off so that it doesn't uh, doesn't get cornered or trapped by you. First attack hits you for eight, and the second one hits you for six. Okay. I am still a badger. Still and now I'm badger. angry. All right. Um, and then that's the end of my turn. It's going to be Mir's turn. Sorry, Mir. I keep saying Mir, I think, because of the Mir space station. It's okay. <laughs> just, just think of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And myrrh, yes. Myrrh, okay. There we go. There we go. All right, so it is my turn again. Um, have, do I see the other two that have come up? That are coming up? Yeah, you see them flying in low uh, right where the, the last place that you saw where it okay. was. She's this... going to just keep twanging her, her sitar bow and keep playing. Okay, uh, so you're firing at these two new ones then? Mm -hmm. I'll okay. pick just one of them because I live with so, gotcha. Um, okay, disadvantage because they're so far away. Oh, that might hit. Um, that is another twenty. Oh, nice. <gasps> this dice yeah, the... likes me. I'm so glad I picked the gold <laughs> set for her. <laughs> You've been charging them up for so long. They've been they've been sitting in a box for a year. They're happy mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. All right, and that will be <laughs> six points of damage. Okay. So six points of damage on that one, and it uh, takes him by surprise. And uh, Gildan, you can see as they're flying in low past you, um, one of uh, Murr's arrows streaks out and hits the rider, and the rider goes tumbling uh, from, its, uh, from its vehicle uh, into the sand and dirt uh, near your feet. And uh, Ellie, continue running. Yes, and my next round I can start attacking, right? Or Correct. Is this the round? Uh, at the end of this round, you will be in the vicinity of where they're at. So you run up, you can kind of see a, a vaguely uh, gildan shaped uh, thing. I don't, well, maybe not. I think you got like a 15 on your stealth check. Um, um, you might want to roll to uh, see if you can actually spot him. But you do see one of the enemies not far who is uh, lying in the sand. Yeah, I had a 17. 17. Hide. Okay, cool. Then, yes. Then that's all I'm, I could do. Okay. Um, let's see. Baloo? Um, you can use multi attack while in the beast form, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what we're saying. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been doing that. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you could uh, use one of those multi attacks for a grapple if you want. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. I like it. So, in which case, I'm going to bite this guy again because he just won't. He's just not going to go down. No. Uh, all this right. seems so a pretty he, tough warrior here. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 hits. All right, let me do damage with that real quick. As much as the crit, four. Um, and then I'm going to 
try to grapple afterward. Okay. So four damage and then a... Oh, wait, but I have the the Totem of the War Beast going, so I, I have advantage on strength checks. Yeah. So I got uh, 14. A 14? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with your prodigious strength and channeling the uh, the, the the war beast, uh, you almost overpower him. But this warrior is uh, is lithe as well as uh, as well as tough, and at the last minute, kind of slips out of your grip and, and brings his uh, brings his pole arm to uh, to intercede in front of you, get you okay. away from him. <laughs> um, then I I am at the end of that. I am going to use a bonus action to revert back to bugbear form okay so it's just like i come out of the sand shrew and i i'm i am probably bigger actually now um <laughs> and and uh and i just i just like give him like a good old goblin roar okay and, uh, uh, everybody who's sort of paying attention and here can hear baloo give off this uh this great big roar my ac is better now ah, I see. <laughs> um icky you are you run up into the area and uh, you can spot Gildan if you get a 17 on a perception check. Otherwise, there is a uh, a downed uh, warrior with an arrow sticking out of him uh, near where you are. I think you're muted. Muted in Sisu. <laughs> Gild Gildan's not even on her mind. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gildan! <laughs> Um, but I have two sickles, and I would like to start out with casting Ensnaring Strike okay. on, on the warrior that I can see. Uh -huh. um, and I would like to go ahead and, and make my two attacks, uh, since Ensnaring Strike is a bonus action. Okay, sounds good. First one's a 13. Um, you have advantage to hit him because he's prone. Oh, neato cheeto. Yeah, first one's a 13. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then second one is in 21. The second one hits. The first one scrapes awesome. off his uh, armored hide. Awesome. And then... Wait, what's... Oh my gosh. Oh no. I zoomed out because I'm a fool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. So then he's going to be uh, caught up in those thorny vines. Okay. I need to roll my D4. That's not a D4. From your sickles? Yeah, from my si Well, from my single sickle. <laughs> I swiped left-handed at first. All right, I got a five. Five. Yeah. All right, so do I need to make any kind of save for that ensnaring strike, or how do yeah, I escape strength, from it? Uh, strength saving throw. Gotcha. Um, well, it's not my turn, so I'll do that next time. But yeah. strength saving throws would be. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Gildan. I have a question, a mechanical question. Um, mm -hmm. I can see those two. If they cannot see me, do I get advantage on my attack? Yes. Okay, so make an attack. 23 to hit with my thorn whip on one of them. Nice. Um, yes, 23 will hit on that one. Okay. Uh, 1d6 piercing damage. So it does two piercing damage. Thank you, Dice. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to pull him 10 feet uh, closer, and then uh, that will bring him within range of my spiritual weapon. So the old hag puppet will go floating up to him and start cracking him on the head. Uh, <laughs> ah! So I got a fifteen to hit. Um, it, this one is still this is this one is uh, still prone. So you, I think your spiritual the one that I grabbed get, with the third one. You were, were you grabbing the one, uh, the oh, other one oh, off of the uh, thing? I guess it was unclear which. Uh, you yeah, off whichever whichever one I hit in. Uh, if I have advantage, I have twenty three to hit. Uh, twenty three does again. Hit. All right, so that does uh, much better. So that does ten points of damage. Nice. Um, yeah, this guy's looking quite <laughs> quite beat up because yes. he's not even done anything and has been has fallen off his uh, his vehicle and been smashed and sliced and stabbed. Um, 
<laughs> so it, uh, I've got two uh, two warriors here. The one on blue uh, continues to uh, to try to maneuver you in a pos- advantageous position to deliver a killing blow, and strikes at you twice with its uh, pole arm. Um, your armor class is 15, and it misses you twice, uh, whiffing in the air around you. Um, and then the one that is surrounded by uh, a hag puppet spiritual weapon and a Gila monster wielding a pair of sickles uh, attempts to um, get up and uh, make an attack against... Oh, well, he's actually he's in snare, isn't he? That saving throw to uh, to do anything to get out. In this case, uh, it continues to be ensnared. And can I make an attack while it's ensnared, uh, Icky? I don't have a ensnaring strike handy, real quick. You're muted. <laughs> I'm a failure. I'll, I'll figure it out happens to everybody. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it says restrained uh, ah. by the magical vines. So. Okay. So when you're yeah, restrained, it's... is it an attack with disadvantage? I do believe it's an attack with disadvantage. Yeah. We'll go ahead. Or if he, but if he tries to escape, that consumes his action. That's true yes. as well. So he has struggled and tried to escape, and he is done making it Murr's turn. <laughs> then I will shoot him. <laughs> He's already a disadvantage, so the fact that he's prone doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright, so... Ooh, that one might not hit. Uh, nope, I don't think a 13 hits. Mm-hmm. Nope. No. An arrow flies in, but misses its mark. Um, Ellie? Oh, I'm so sorry. Whenever oh, he's up? restrained, he's going to take 1d6 piercing damage at the start Ooh. of each of his turns. Let's go ahead and roll that. From the vines. Sorry about that. No worries. It'll be Ellie's turn after this damage is rolled. Cool. <laughs> it's a one. <laughs> a one. <laughs> one it. little thorn pricks him. Uh huh. <laughs> Tink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ellie. All right. So as soon as Ellie gets there, she's just running, running. She gets there. She's like, "Baloo, are you are you are you okay?" And then she sees him. Um, maybe were you getting damage? Uh, no, yeah. Get this. I think you. I think your badger form had taken some damage, but yes. Baloo is okay. actually unhurt. Okay, cool. Well, I think he's kind of hurt, or this thing's kind of hurt. Um, so I just have the urge to like throw up. Like there's something happening, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and I'm just like. Ugh. And I just like enter a rage, but like a. <laughs> it's like you cannot help yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like this is yeah. the first time she's ever experienced a rage because she's never had to do this before. Nice. So just there's just something that just takes over her, and just like fire in her eyes. She like takes out her great axe, and then she just attacks uh, the first, the closest one that's or whoever's attacking uh, Baloo. That was the first one that they they started fighting. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then uh, I am going to to roll because that's what we do. Oh, that I don't is roll. what we do. Uh, that's a six. Oh no, that's. I didn't say <laughs> recklessly attack, right? Uh, you can if you wish. I mean, like that you could at recklessly attack, right? This is the yeah. first session. We're still working yeah. out the details. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll recklessly attack, so that means I have advantage. Yes. Uh. uh oh. Uh. Twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. Cool. So then, I'm gonna take out. Oh no, all my dice. Okay. So then, he's going to take. Oh, oh, to 14, 15, 16 damage. <laughs> uh, right. Nice. Um, so, how do you kill this guy? Because you kind of come up behind him without. You know, he's got his back to you. <laughs> worked yourself into this kind of nervous frenzy. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> How's so it just go down? right after, I just feel something. I am not myself, and I just kind of whack him right uh, on the back of his head, and I just like uh, put my foot on the, on his back, and I just like, ah! <laughs> and I just don't know what's what happened. With a great axe. <laughs> With a yeah yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so 
So, Baloo, you're fighting this guy, right? And <laughs> you see out of the sand uh, Ellie's running at uh, at your opponent. And just in a split second before you can really react, this guy just keels over dead with a big axe sticking out of the back of his head. <laughs> and Ellie's like, put her foot on the back of it and rip it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and like the look in her eye, I'm sure, is just priceless. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, is that all your actions uh, for Ellie? Uh, yes, because I didn't go into a frenzy. Right, gotcha. Not yet. Um, Baloo, it's your turn. Um, Baloo takes a half second to be like, okay, this is new. Um, uh, and he, he makes sure to make eye contact with, with uh, this new crazy person that he's seeing. Almost like a different person. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, again, in a, in a sign, he knows animals, so in a sign of, I don't want to get hit by this thing, he looks away, then looks back, and then looks for his next target. Okay. So. The, the sand has started to die down a bit, um, and visibility now is more like 20 feet or so. Mm-hmm. Um, the wall of it has, has started to wash over uh, wash over Trade Town. Um, you can see uh, your other... Uh, you know, your other allies, I guess, your other fellow combatants, uh, short distance away, fighting another one of these uh, warriors who is pinned to the ground by grasping thorny vines. So they're just beating him on the ground. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, and, and, and that's all we see? That's all you see right now. You can, you can make out other forms, other pairs of uh, flying vessels uh, through the sand and I mean, if, if all you do this round is, like, take stock of the situation, I can give you a better uh, feel for what's going on. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, okay. Yeah. So looking around and, and kind of, like, getting a breather, you can see that multiple pairs of these things are flying through, and it looks like they're headed almost uh, entirely towards uh, Trade Town. Some of them are, are flying wide, kind of around the city, whereas others are making their way directly towards it. Um, at the moment, none of them seem like they're uh, have either noticed you, or whatever first wave has come through, has has sort of passed you by. Um, but you don't see any other enemies in your immediate vicinity. Okay. Okay. Um, that's cool. And that's all I'll do, really. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, Icky, it's your turn. Got it. First time. Um, well, yeah, I'm gonna keep going with at this guy with my sickles. So, yeah, he's about trapped. No, can't yeah. do anything. Feeling great about beating. that. It's the best. <laughs> unless, I, <laughs> unless I screw this up. Thirteen again. <laughs> and I did. I did screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. They are wearing some fairly tough armor, right? They are. <laughs> She's just like wildly late. <laughs> what about is Skitter Step doing anything? Um, no, Skitter Step is hiding inside of the harness because he's okay. a chicken shit. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Gildan, uh, is the one the hag puppet uh, beating on uh, dead or uh, looks like it's- he's still? It's pretty close to it. You, it, it's, you know, pinned to the ground, has been smashed up a couple times, and is not uh, writhing as vigorously as before. All right, the hag puppet drops another attack for twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two hits. And uh, damage is ooh, eleven. Nice. Yeah. So um, your hag puppet spiritual weapon kind of beats this thing into a pulp. Um, and Icky, you're up close and you can hear it squish inside its armored skin as uh, mm-hmm. this spiritual weapon crashes down on it. Delicious. And uh, does that essentially finish him off? Yes, it does. All right, so then I'm going to move up to him since I was about 30 feet away. Mm-hmm. I went to cast Spare the Dying on him as a cantrip and start nice. tying him up. Nice. Pag style. So, Hagtide. <laughs> Hagtide. <laughs> uh, Gildan rushes out of his hiding spot, uh, preventing the uh, the warrior from dying, 
and uh, begins. I mean, you can even use the 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 vines from the ensnaring strike to start oh, nice. uh, to start uh, wrapping him up in it. And um, as you're tying him up, um, it's the warrior seems unconscious or at the very least uh, disoriented enough that's not putting up any resistance. Mm-hmm. Um, you you too can see this sort of wall of, of dust and sand as it hits Trade Town, and uh, you know the, the obscure you know as obscure sort of the action that's going on. Um, but you can also see many more of these pairs of flying uh, vehicles as they dart in and about the uh, the streets of Trade Town and go wide, uh, look like maybe heading for the villages beyond. And uh, our viewers and players will have to tune in next week to see exactly what it, what happens. Um, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. dun dun dun! Always with a cliffhanger. Always. Um, that's great. I I love a good first session, even though sometimes it it's uh, it, it takes a minute to stretch out the legs and get a feel for the characters and uh, and the setting. There's something. Uh, fresh and exciting about a new game um, with new players and um, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the game and, uh, and you know, join us uh, every week and on Tuesdays for uh, for Starward Bound uh, let's go through and uh, talk to the players one last time get uh, get to know them and uh, where else we can find them online and various parts of the interwebs um, let's go reverse order and start with Lindy. Well, that was a ton of fun. I am so excited to see where this campaign goes. So happy to be here. I am already, I'm already hyped for next week. I want to know. I want to know more about what this thing is. What's going on? I got stuff to do. You know, there's a very busy woman. Right, um, disrupting your, uh, your your business. It's very disruptive to business. How dare they? I got money to make, people to woo. It's a thing. But uh, you can find me online at Laugh Love Lindy. I do on my own stream Dungeons and Dragons video games and some cosplay work. Uh, you can find me on Wednesdays with uh, Jay Pruitt Inc. as well. Jay Pruitt on Encounter Roleplay, playing some Call of Cthulhu. Um, Tuesdays nice. is when I do D&D on my channel. Uh, also, a Cthulhu podcast called Tomes and Tentacles is released on Tuesday. It's a busy day. Um, <laughs> yeah, and here every Thursday for this amazing new campaign that I am so happy to be a part in. Yeah, it's neat. Awesome, awesome. And that Tomes and Tentacles is really fun as well. I, I, it's so much fun. I'm about halfway through the, the latest episode. Yeah, I play good. a creepy mortician girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's so great. Oh, yeah. Uh, Grant. I had an enormous amount of fun. I'm still figuring out who my character is. I like to do that the first session, come in with a, you know, a lot of blank spaces in the personality and idea, but I really love the setting. I love post-apocalyptic settings. Uh, your brother, Josh, is a hoot to play with. I uh, love that I got to sling dice with some good friends again. And Jim, you're a wonderful dungeon master. Thank you. Now, Thank for you, you fans in chat of this show, if you want to follow me on other channels, on Friday nights, I run the Dungeons & Dragons World Series on Exploding Dice. On Saturdays, I host a show on Encounter Roleplay's YouTube channel called The Story Forge, which is all about world building for your tabletop role-playing games. Starting April 8th, I will be on Monty Cook Games' Cypher System show. Mondays, I'm on the Greyhawk channel with Classic Crawls. Tuesdays, I'm on Mython with Unmade Gaming. And Wednesdays, I run D&D Open Mic Nights. Seven Ooh. days a week. There you go. <laughs> Anna, how are, uh, how'd you find the session and where can we find you online? I had loads of fun. Um, I think playing a character that doesn't know anything is kind of fun, especially <laughs> if it's a new campaign. Yeah. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, but... I think it's going to be very interesting to see where Ellie goes and what trouble she gets into. I, I really like that there's a, a human. It's one of those moments where you, you tell everybody like, okay, guys, all the usual stuff is out. Make some weirdos, make whatever you want. And like having to like find a place for where a human could fit in is going to be a fun <laughs> challenge. And oh, yeah. I, I really like the, uh, the inclusion of it. Good choice. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I where think- can we find you online? So you guys can find me on Twitch as Cyborg Pizza. Um, I stream a lot of indie games, a lot of Overwatch, um, Skyrim, a bunch of everything. And also on Encounter Roleplay on Thursdays at 
10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And also, um, I make D&D pins uh, like this. We are working on shipping, sorry, like oh. internationally, so mm -hmm. with us. And last but not least, I'm part of a all ladies 5e Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast called Wonder Quest. And um, it's lots of fun. And we just released a Patreon. So, and there's a video of me kicking butt, my best friend and my other friend that my friend Travis filmed. And it's, it's really fun. I, I saw know, it. It was really it fun. It looked like a lot of fun to shoot. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> kicking my best friend's butt. That's. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh josh brother and for the audience josh is my brother and we've uh Hi. And so we are related in fact mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true we've been playing all of uh all of our lives all much. of our lives sure um yeah uh you know you can find me on twitter at beard for charity but also at other nerd it's kind of my it's my uh, side project that i'm uh, still building up still working on i have a discord channel there you can also join if you want to just chat um, I don't really stream, at least not yet. So you can't not find yet. me doing anything <laughs> fancy. But if anybody wants to stream with me, I'm here. You're available. I am I'm available. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also working on setting up some art commissions. So if you're, if you go to my my page and you see some of my art and you like it, uh, reach out to me. Awesome. Awesome. And TK. Uh, I'm TK, and I am the I'm like one of the two people here who don't stream. Um, I'm a writer. I write right. Southern Gothic, American Horror, a very like Lovecraftian, Children of the Corn vibe to all my stuff. Um, if you want to read any of that, I'll have a piece in the Waffle Zine, um, the, the Dice Camera Zine that they're doing with a run, headed up by Scarlet Moth. Um, if you want essays and stuff that are less horror, you can check me out on Lisa Chen's uh, Behold Her podcast, which is dope as hell. Mm -hmm. um, opens up the platform not only for female identifying people, but also for non-binary people, which I am. Um, so it was really cool to to have a platform that was all inclusive like that. Nice. Um, if you want to read any of my fiction, you can check me out on Facebook because I'm too inept to own a website yet. <laughs> Websites are passing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. But yeah, um, and my Facebook is under TK Johnson. You can just look for the, the page awesome. and it's all spooky candle people and horrible crow people and, <laughs> nice and uh, va vaguely the vaguely uh cloaked political stuff about being black in america nice so. that Thanks. behold her podcast was very good that that first episode was Thank was, was top notch um yeah. i really am excited to see where this campaign goes and um want to i'm i'm a i'm those of you who maybe watched uh, some of my DMing on Saber Dice, this may be a bit more uh, laid back than that campaign, more uh, to my style. Um, so I, I hope you guys uh, join us every week and see how this game unfolds and where this, I think, maybe cutthroat band of, of adventurers <laughs> is certainly uh, a bit shady and a bit... Um, I don't know nefarious. I don't. I don't know. I want. To, I don't want to speak too soon, uh, but I'm excited to see uh, where it goes. Let's give a, a a big hand to our behind the scenes guy, uh, Brandon at War Eagle Keep, who keeps the stream running, helps us out. All of the uh, audio, the pictures, he's there. Our silent player, uh, ever watchful, and helping us bring uh, bring this to you guys. Um, that's all I got, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to join us on uh, Tuesday for Starward Bound, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye.